In our very high tech world, lighthouses seem like a relic of the past, but they remain a very important um, feature um, uh, in many places. There are more than 700 active lighthouses in our country alone. Here's a thing I learned about um, lighthouses recently that kind of interested me. Um, lighthouses are a particular kind of nautical light feature. They're an oculating light. That's a term for a light that flashes off and on, but not only does it flash off and on, the duration that the light is on is longer than the duration that the light is off. So it's periods of light and darkness, but the periods of light are longer. The darkness comes, but the light returns. And the light has more staying power than the darkness. That sounds familiar to us. As people who have walked in darkness, we have been assured there is a great light, to quote the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. But the notion that the darkness can return feels very now. Here we are in a moment that we have been anticipating for some time. I remember last year on Christmas Eve where we had the Christmas Eve service at my house with me in front of my bookcases. If you've been hanging out with us online for a while, that, that, that's just a uh, uh, scenario you're going to be familiar with. For a long, long time, we we uh, <laughs> uh, we live streamed from my apartment back in the really rough going days of uh, 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 lockdown and COVID. Last year at Christmas Eve, we did that from the house, and all I could think was next year on John Street. Next year on John Street. I should have been more specific. <laughs> I should have said next year on John Street with all of us in the same room. But things were not as we anticipated. We have cycled back to uh, a time when it's just not safe for too many of us to be in the same enclosed space for a long time. And it feels like darkness has returned. We saw a little bit of light in the summer and spring and we all got vaccinated and hand, you know, would have given our arm to almost anybody who had a needle in it at one point. And things were going so well, and it seemed that the light had returned and life was returning to normalcy. And, and there was so much joy in all the things that we could do together. And it's easy to be discouraged because we know that we have not, all of us, made the best decisions, that there are those among us who refuse to be vaccinated. And, there are those among us who will not be masked in um, public settings. And so the darkness has returned, but we must not be discouraged. We must trust that the light will come again. And we must trust that we serve a God who offers us in the birth of Jesus, an oculating light. It's not the absence of darkness. It's not the removal of all darkness from our presence. It's not that injustices don't continue to happen. It's not that we are not beset by challenges and problems. It's the assurance that the light is there. And it's the assurance that the light always lasts longer than the darkness and the assurance that the light is always stronger than the darkness, that the darkness is present, but that the darkness cannot overcome the light. That is the promise that we gather tonight in this weird way to celebrate and to name and to lay claim to as the people of God. That is why we are here.
Not because there's no darkness and not because we have eradicated darkness, but because the darkness is not stronger than the light. An oculating light in astronomy means that for a period of time, a light is hidden. In those instances, it's not even that the light disappears. It's simply that it's hiding behind something. So I wanna invite you into the trust and the expectation and the hope and the confidence that is exactly what happens now. The light may not be easy to see. But we have spent the weeks of Advent looking for light. And I hope that you have found that when you take the time, when you, when you look with purpose and intention, when you look with hope and expectation, that light is present all around us. Sometimes it just requires us to move a little to see it better. Sometimes we just have to lift something up to really take note of it. And even as things begin to get better with the pandemic and we move through this surge and we get to the other side of it, even when we're able to go out and, and be more social and, and gather together safely again, even then there will be other challenges we face. Racial injustice will continue to demand our attention. Economic justice will continue to require our energy. There will be people who will be hurting and harmed by so many things around us. And that might yet well feel dark. And when we face those things, I want to invite you again to remember that yes, there is darkness, but the light lasts longer. And sometimes darkness hides that light, but we have the opportunity to get in the line of sight of it, if we so choose. And even on this Christmas Eve we had not planned for, we had not expected, I still trust, expect, and believe that it is the Christmas Eve we need. And it can be all that we make of it. We can do with it what we will. And we can find the light even in the midst of all of this. Sometimes it does feel like there are just two many shadows. But I would refer you to the words of one of the great preachers, William Sloan Coffin. He said, the world is cold and dark, yes. But even in the deepest darkness of winter, we know in our heart an invincible summer. The world is lined with shadows. But what are shadows finally, if not proof of light? We come, we celebrate, we lay claim this night as we remember the birth of Jesus and the presence of Christ then and now in our midst. Let us trust anew that the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, that those who lived in a land of deep darkness and then light has shone. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen.